Well guys, it finally happened. The dreaded flat tire. I was out doing a video, riding, doing a little off-roading. Decided to hit a new area that I hadn't ridden before. And sure enough, the flat tire. And the first thing we want to do is we want to look for anything that is sticking out of the wheel or that might have poked the wheel and caused it to go flat up. Oh, look at that. So usually it's not this easy. Okay, normally you won't find what is sticking out of your tire as easily as I just did. Uh, as you can see here, there is a, looks like a nail, but I'm, I think it's a twig, completely stuck through the tire. That is crazy. I've never, never seen anything that big stick through unless it was a nail. And what I'm going to show you next is how I repair something like this on the road or on, you know, the trail. And if you need to replace the tube, you're going to have to take the nuts off and you're going to have to clip this power wire and remove the wheel in order to get the new tube around the rim. So be sure you always have a crescent wrench, ideally some scissors of some kind to cut this, this um, zip tie off so that you can disconnect the motor and take the wheel off, put the new tube on and blow it up. Okay, so the first thing, like I said, I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pull this out. Oh, geez, look at that. Oh my gosh, look at that. So it is a nail. Well, that makes a lot more sense. So this is actually a rusted nail. I'm not sure how well that comes out in the camera. I know it can't focus super close, but rusted nail. Looks like a headless type of a nail, like a finished nail maybe. So that is what went into the tire. There's going to be a huge hole from this, but the good thing is I should be able to patch that hole and continue using this tube without having to replace the tube. So let me show you how I do that. And all of these items I use that I pull out of my backpack here are listed in the description box with a link to Amazon, as well as the bike itself. If you guys are interested in picking up a 2024 wired freedom with a 40 mile per hour top speed, hydraulic disc brakes, full suspension. It's an amazing 60 volt bike. Take a look at that description and use my link. I'd really appreciate it. It definitely helps out the channel. I'm going to dig into my backpack here and I want to show you a few items that I always keep with me no matter what when I'm riding. Now I may not take these with me on a short ride if I go somewhere around my house, but if I'm going on any long distance rides, I always keep these items with me just in case. The first one is going to be this Mongoose fat tire tube has a Schrader valve like the one that comes on the bike, which is your standard uh, tube type of uh, valve stem. And it fits fat tire bikes with tire dimensions 26 by four inches. So that's the size you're gonna wanna use for this particular Wired Freedom bike. The tires look like this when they're fully inflated. And if you're not sure what size your bike uses, it's obviously written on the sidewall. So this is the tube I prefer. They used to be $10 on Amazon. I believe now they're closer to $15. I'll have to double check. But again, if you're interested and you need uh, a new tube for your bike, I highly recommend this because the reason I like it is it's a very heavy duty tube. Um, some of the tubes out there might be a little bit cheaper, but they seem to be kind of, I don't know. I just feel like they're not as thick. You want the thickest tube you can get to prevent these punctures as much as possible from goat heads and other smaller items. A nail of the size that punctured the hole in this tire and tube, there's probably nothing you can do about that. So keep a tube with you. They're not too big, they're not too heavy. You can even take it out of the box to make it fit better in your backpack. Keep one of those in there. Also, I highly recommend you find a good quality. This one's not the greatest quality, but it does the job. Crescent wrench. It doesn't have to be a gigantic crescent wrench, just one big enough to be able to fit the rear nut on your wheel to get that off. And a set of scissors or clippers. I usually use a Swiss Army knife I have on my keys to be able to cut this zip tie. Because again, even if you can get the wheel off and everything off, if you can't cut this zip tie to get the motor wire disconnected, you're not going to be able to remove the wheel completely. And that's what you're going to need to do to put the new tube on. Um, okay. so. The next thing I want to talk about are these slime peel and stick patches. These are great and it's very easy to use these. They're incredibly affordable. They're I think three or four dollars online. 
And all they basically are is glue, glued back style stickers. And these are just a patch and it comes with a small metal scratching uh, device, I guess you could say. And what you use that for is you want to rough up the surface so that it gets a good mating surface and sticks well to the tire, to the tube itself. So I'm going to show you how these work. I think that this will be the perfect solution for this particular uh, problem we're having here. I'll just put these back in. Okay, and it comes in a little container. Again, less than $5. I believe they're 3 or $4 online. I'll leave a link in the description below if you guys are interested. Amazing product. Um, and not sponsor anything by any of these companies. These are just things that I found that work well with bikes. And I wanna share everything that I've found and everything that works well for me with you guys because I know that if I'm having these problems with this bike and getting flats and different things, eventually you may have the same problem and I wanna give you the easiest solution, at least that I have found. If you found any better way to do these things, be sure to leave it in the comments below. Okay, the next item is your typical pump okay right now this one here is a crank brothers pump it comes with a this is an older one so it's getting a little bit messed up now at this point but it has a high volume and a high pressure setting so when you set it to high volume that's your first couple pumps it puts a lot of air at once uh, but it gets harder to do as you start to fill up the tube and then you set it to high pressure like that and then that will be less air but it's easier to pump for the higher pressure so these are great. This has a Presta valve side and a Schrader valve side. So you can do either type of valve um, and then you turn it to which side you wanna use to lock it in place. These are great, they're lightweight. They're not very expensive. I will leave a link to one like this. There isn't this exact model available online, but there's the newer versions of it. Uh, these are great if you're trying to save weight, but there's an even better solution, in my opinion. If you have an electric bike and you have a car at home, you might want to have an electric pump. Now these are fairly affordable. This one in particular, I believe is about 30 to $40 and I'll leave a link in the description below as well. There's also many different other companies. This is one that I found because my friend had it and I loved it so much. I went out and bought one immediately because I was sold on it as soon as I saw him use it. The company here is Woodwind. And how this works is you basically have, and the reason I like this one in particular, it has USB-C charging. It has a built-in light. And it also has the hose or tube, which is a Schrader valve connection. And all you do is you pull it out of this slot right here, which is magnetically held in there so it doesn't fall out. You pull this out and you just screw that in to this red spot here. And that's where the air comes out to fill up your tires. The great thing about this is you can use it on your bike. You can also use it at home on your car on other non you know electric bikes will work fine too anything where you need air compression now it's not the lightest i'm sorry it's not the lightest maybe and it's also not the quietest pump that you can get but it is affordable it is fairly robust i mean it's seems pretty durable on all sides a couple vents on both sides to let air flow um, but what's great about it that i like is it has preset um, percentages or i'm sorry uh, air pressures that you can put here so you can Press the mode button and you go into basketball. I have it set to eight and a half pounds. Um, 100 pounds for personal whatever you want it to be set to. 35 pounds for my car tires. 40 pounds for a motorcycle tire. And 15 pounds for a bike. Now you can adjust this. You can set it to whatever you want on any of those different modes. You can, you can move those around, but those are memory uh, codes so that you'll be able to come to it at any time, depending on what you're trying to fill up. So say you wanna leave yours at 36 pounds for your car and you come back to it and turn it back on, it's set, you just set it to car and it's ready to go at 36 pounds. It also automatically shuts off once it reaches the appropriate per, uh, pounds per square inch. So I have my bike tires set to 15 pounds per square inch. Now remember these Chow Yang tires in the 2024 Wired Freedom have a maximum of, 15, of 20 pounds. You also, can press the U button for unit and you can change from pounds per square inch to bars of pressure, kilopascals, KPAs of pressure, and kilograms per centimeter cubed of pressure for some reason. But I like to leave it at pounds per square inch. If you hold the U button down, that will turn on the light and you'll have a flashlight if you need it at, in the dark, it'll stay on, okay? And then to turn that off, you just hold it back down again and that'll turn the light off, okay? So this thing is great, and this is what it sounds like when it's not hooked up to anything. 
press the button and it turns off again. It's not very loud, but it is, you know, if you're doing this in the morning, say filling up your air pressure on your tires of your car at, you know, seven in the morning when it's cold, it is, a, it sounds a little loud in the neighborhood, but it's not too bad for what it's doing in my opinion, and it's quick. So again, it is USB-C chargeable, so you don't have to worry about batteries or anything like that. Just leave it charged uh, every once in a while, charge it up and you're good. So let's go back to this tire here and find that hole. Okay, so the hole is right there. Again, I'm not sure how well this is gonna come out on camera, but the hole is right there. And the one thing I'm gonna do too before I start is I'm gonna pull the cap off of the valve stem. Be sure that you do this so that you can push the valve stem in and that will give you, if you're working on this part of the tube, you're gonna need that to happen. Basically what we wanna do is we wanna get this tire up over the rim here. Okay, so this side is already kind of over the rim. So I'm just gonna bring that around. And again, the great thing about these fat tires is that it's fairly easy to get the bead off like that. You can see how easily I just did that, okay? So, pulling this tube out, we can access that hole. Anyways, that is the puncture right there. And again, that will be probably your hardest feat of this will be finding the actual puncture, especially if it's smaller than this. A nail size puncture is fairly easy to find as long as you're looking in the right spot. And again, you may need to pull out more of the tube in order to find the hole, which is fairly easy to do. Fill it up with air and look for the leak or listen for the leak sometimes. Uh, two different things you can do is you can listen for the leak with your ear when it's full and hear the hissing sound, or you can also I'm gonna take these out of here, slime peel and stick patches, or you can um, put your hand out and kind of feel for where any air may be going through the tube. That's another way to find it. Now, the reason I like these peel and patch stickers instead of using the slime brand green slime that a lot of people will put in their tubes is when I, I found is if I put that into my tubes, when you do get a hole in the in the tube like this, you'll get a bunch of green slime that comes out of that hole with the air pressure and it goes all inside your rims and your wheels, which is to me, I don't know, it just makes a mess. And then eventually it starts drying and it gets sticky. And every time you take your wheel and your tire off, you have that same issue of that green slime that will always be there until you take the wheel off and completely clean it. So I don't use green slime itself but this green slime brand of patches is amazing. But like I said, what you want to do here is you want to use the, the rough end sides. So you can kind of like bend it a little to hold it in your hand, but you want to use this sharp serrated side and you don't want to obviously poke any other holes in it, but you want to just scuff back and forth. I like to go like four or five different directions on it and just kind of make a roughened surface. And what that does is it allows the stick patch to not stick to, first of all, any dirt. And also it gives it a better, rougher surface to kind of attach to. So, okay, then you're gonna go ahead and take this sticker and you wanna very carefully peel this off of the backing here. Okay, now once you've peeled that sticker off the backing, you don't wanna to touch it too much because it'll lose all its stickiness and you wanna center it right over that hole. It's very important it goes right over the very center of that hole and you want to kind of push from the inside out and the idea is to let that stick as best as possible by pushing down ideally your tube is flat at this point or mostly flat so that you can really get a good seal on that sticker okay and then what i like to do is to kind of let that sticker sit for a while okay it, it has like a sticky back on the back side especially in the sun like this it'll kind of melt it a little bit and let that let that patch kind of sit there and get stuck before you fill it up and that's where this air pump is amazing if you have a small hole and you're losing air slowly you can just add air keep riding add a little more air keep riding and it can get you back to a spot where you can work on your bike a little better now if you have a big hole like this you might have to do it right on the spot okay so let's add a little bit of air to the tube. Now this is just enough to kind of fill it up, not too much because we want to be able to put it back under the rim and under the tire. But what I like to do is give it a little more air just so that we can kind of press this on and make sure that it's got a good tight seal. Now that's a really good patch. I have done three or four patches like this on a tube and it works great. It'll work for months. Hasn't given me any problems. 
Uh, once I get about four or five of these patches, I tend to just replace the tube at that point. But you can make a tube like this last for months with multiple flats with no issues. Yeah. Once you're sure that everything is in, in the area it needs to be, you can put the tire back over the wheel. As you can see here, this is a really easy process. You don't even need a tire iron. Now, I do carry a plastic tire iron with me, the ones you get that come with tubes usually. Uh, this particular fat tire tube does not come with a tire iron in the, in the uh, box, but if you have one of those, they are handy, but you don't need it for these fat tire bikes. If you take the air pressure out of the tube and it goes flat like that, the, the tire comes right off the bead. It's really easy to do. It's really easy to put back on. Completely different than, you know, a regular bicycle tire. Okay, so now both sides are over the bead. The valve stem is lined up. And if it's a little crooked, all you have to do is grab the wheel and the tire and just shift them. You want to make sure that valve stem is sticking straight up and it's not leaning to one side or the other, okay? And if it is, just slightly move the tire. That will move the tube inside and make sure that that's sticking straight up. It's not going sideways either direction. All right, now as you can see here too, max inflate to 20 pounds per square inch. So don't put more than 20 pounds in these tires, okay? I know there are other brands like Kenda's that can take more. These ones in particular, 20 pounds max, I run them at 15 pounds. Okay, back to our electronic air pump. As you can see there, I set it down without turning the power off and it shuts off. I believe it's about five minutes. If you don't use this for five minutes, it turns itself off, which is great. So you don't accidentally kill the battery. Okay, go back up to your wheel and your valve. And just, this has a screw mechanism on the top that you turn side to side and that allows you to tighten it onto the valve so that there's no leak. So you go ahead and screw that onto the valve stem. Turn the air pump on by holding the button down for three seconds till all those three lights light up. Now I have it set to bicycle at 15 pounds per square inch. We're gonna go ahead and turn it on. Now as it's filling up, you're gonna wanna kind of move the tire around. If you have the weight off the tire, you don't need to do as much. Just make sure those beads on both sides of the tire are seated. If it's sitting on the ground, you're gonna wanna lift the weight off of the flattened tire so that it seats properly on the bead. All right, it's going up nicely. I can feel it getting some pressure. We're still at zero pounds per square inch, but you'll see what that goes to in a second. And now we're at two pounds. Okay. Still feel it starting to fill up. Now you can imagine how much pumping this would take to get your tube filled back up with one of those hand pumps. I can tell you right now, it takes a long time. Uh, it's not the funnest thing to do. Okay, two and a half pounds, three pounds. Okay, now at three pounds, I'm gonna turn it off. And I know that seems really low, but the reason why, I wanna show you in it for a second here, is I like to start rotating the tire and looking down at it to make sure that it's seated, it's not wobbling side to side or anything weird. So as you can see there, it's seated pretty well. We'll look on this side so I can show you what I'm talking about. You want to make sure this bead here is over the rim evenly on all sides. And if it's not, just kind of give it a tap. I like to kind of do this to it. Just kind of slowly hit each side. And that should make sure that, that you want that line of the bead there on the tire to be even all the way around. You don't want it to be sticking up somewhere or pushed down low. So when you spin it, Okay, you can see there how there's a little bit of a kick in right there, okay? So I'm gonna slow it down right on that spot and I'm gonna make sure that's not uneven, okay? And another way to do it, like I said, is to kind of push from both sides. Now, once you get more air in the tire, you can do this again and ensure that it's fully seated on all edges. So if you're looking here, you can kind of see this line. I'm not sure if you can see that, but it goes in there for a second, right there. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of make sure that bead sticks out a little more and 
As you get more air, that will naturally pop out on all sides. You just want to make sure that it's relatively even. Okay, so we'll screw this back onto the valve stem here. Again, I have it set to 15 pounds per square inch. So once that's done, that will shut off automatically. Which is really handy for filling up things like your, uh, you know, your bike tires or even your car tires. You can set the pressure and it'll automatically turn off once it reaches that um, pressure, pounds per square inch. And from what I've noticed, I've checked it with the gauge, it's fairly accurate. Um, I haven't had any issues with it being incorrect or off, you know, or off or changing from day to day or anything like that. So as you can see there, we're already at four pounds. It goes up pretty quickly. Once you have a little pressure and pushback on the tire and the wheel itself, it starts to go up a lot quicker. Okay, we're at four and a half pounds. Five pounds. Five and a half. With a patch and air pump, I mean, you can pretty much make it home in most scenarios. The worst case scenario would be that you damage your valve stem, which usually will only happen if you don't properly align it when you install it, or if you ride the tire with it flat, you could damage this valve stem. So once you get a flat tire, walk the bike. Very important. Okay, we're at 14 and a half pounds. I'm not gonna touch it here. When it gets to 15 pounds, it'll run for a little bit longer to make sure it's up at 15 where it needs to be, and then that's it, and it flashes done. Okay, so at that point, you can imagine how long that would take with a hand pump. And that was easy. Okay, so two final things left to do. One, don't forget to put your cap back on your valve stem here. It's always a good idea. And the other thing I recommend is to go ahead and rotate that tire one time and make sure you don't have any weird wobbles. A little bit of wobble is okay, but you basically want to make sure that that tire is seated on the bead you can watch there's a little line right here on the tire that kind of tells you if that line goes away or sticks out that the bead is uneven and the, the tire is uneven on the wheel so if you spin that you can kind of watch that line just to make sure it doesn't disappear it doesn't wobble out it doesn't move anywhere that lets you know that your tire is seated properly on the bead kind of take a look at it from the top here it looks pretty good. I don't see any major wobbling in and out. And if you do, just let the air pressure back out of your, your tube, out of your valve stem, and then adjust that tire to where that line is perfectly even all the way. You should just see it sticking out, maybe like a couple nails, like two or three nails worth of distance, maybe like the thickness of a spoke of sticking in between that line and the wheel itself, if you guys can see that on the camera. And then you can kind of spin it and look to see that that line doesn't, like I said, disappear into the rim or stick out too much or wobble in any way. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video.